Hey, it's Kat at Cat Tales TV. I've been doing research and a lot of things are starting to come together. I look at patterns and I remember during the um, first election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, there was lots of weird activity on Twitter. A lot of people trying to start arguments. They would go from zero to a hundred, like it was insane. And I thought it was very, very odd. Other people notice certain things too as well, but I started noticing there was just a lot of what we learned were bots and most of these bots had numbers at the end of their their name. You know, it'd be like, I don't know, let's say Tom 10, 3, 6, 10, something weird, but there were so many of them. And they pretty much were like pro Trump and anti Hillary, but to the extreme where you thought, is this person sane? So, anyway, that was going on. And then I don't know if Brexit was around the same time or not. I don't remember the exact time of Brexit, but. You know, there was this whole push to separate, you know, some of these European relationships and and it was like a right wing type of push. I want to say fascist, but it seems like there was a lot of angry, vitriol, racist, we don't want these immigrants, etc., cetera, etc., cetera going through the politics, you know? And in America, Trump was yelling about, you know, the border and immigrants, Muslims, etc. So it's sort of like ringing the bell, tapping on racist key words and actions. Very, very similar to what, you know, most dictators and very similar to what Hitler did in, you know, getting Germans to focus on a scapegoat, you know, the Jews. Or, you know, racists in America picking on people of color. But it seemed to be a reoccurring theme. And, you know, in both countries, America and the UK, and other places in Europe, it seemed like there was a lot of people who were following the rallying cry to be, you know, self-centered and anti-immigrant. So we had that, okay? We also had a lot of oligarchs from Russia coming into Europe, coming into America with lots and lots of money, buying up football teams, buying expensive houses, you know, throwing the money around, and also influencing politics. So there was a lot of Russian money coming into American politics. There was a lot of Russian money coming to British politics. So some say the Tories got a lot of money and some say the Republicans got a lot of money from the Russians. Might have been Democrats as well, but it just seemed very obvious that there were certain <sighs> politicians like, what's his name, Getz. And um, I forgot the guy from California he used to make, they used to make jokes about him being a cow, Nunes, yeah. 
they had Russian money connected to them and things. So, money buys influence, buys, you know, power. And there were super yachts. There was, again, these football teams. They were all over the place. These mega mansions. So we fast forward to a lot of rich people have debts. You know, especially if they got palaces and things like that in England. They may not have the revenue to pay for the upkeep. You know, it's very expensive having palaces. So, some of these people are in the House of Lords. And they go to parties. And they're meeting oligarchs. Sexy people. Women or men. Who might be Russian spies. And there's transfers of money, influence, etc., sex, whatever, whatever, whatever. How that gets to where we are now. If you don't know, Putin, the guy that runs Russia, that killed Alexei Navalny, he used to be the head of the KGB, which is like, Uber, Uber, CIA. They know how to manipulate. They play chess on multiple levels. Like, they, they're on a whole other level of mind control. Knowing how to extract information from people. Knowing the weaknesses of people. Getting them to do things what they need to give to get, those kind of things. Master manipulators. But again, Putin's on a whole nother level, and he's lasted this long, so he knows what the fuck he's doing on some levels. But anyway, let's get back to the point. So, it's my theory that, you know, Russia had a lot to do with Trump getting in the White House. They had an ally. He, he brought some Russians over... They had meetings in the White House. Trump's an idiot. If you flatter him, he'll, he'll give you whatever you, you want. And he showed them documents. He showed a lot of people documents. But having a reality star as president, who wasn't even a good businessman, is, was really, really stupid. It also looks like some of the FBI was infiltrated. There are stories coming out that Comey, as well as other people were lenient to Russian mobsters. And I guess there's information coming on with that, coming out, sorry, with that. So, around 2010, I also believe, there was a lot of oligarchs that were dying in UK. They were being poisoned. They said there were suicides when they were actually murdered because they were, you know, trying to take their money out of Russia and maybe they were anti-Putin and Putin couldn't have that. So there's a lot of weird deaths going on around that time. So what does that have to do with now? What it has to do with now is they've updated the game they don't use the exact same bots that they used before during the election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. They're a little more subtle. Like any organism, it evolves. So I think they're a lot more clever, a lot more stealth than they were before. Because it was just way too obvious before. And they're also, I think, hiring like kids to work as bots and to cause, excuse me, when I say kids like teenagers, you know, acting as, you know, Americans, 
typing on computers and getting paid more money than their teachers. But uh, a lot of things have changed. Now it might be AI. But everything's evolving. So let's get back to Brexit not really working. Putin wanting to combine separate states that were once Russia back to what they used to be, as in the Ukraine. And um, probably having a lot of influence on white Europeans who feel closer to Russia than they do to the immigrants that are coming into their country. One thing I've noticed about <laughs> human nature is that like people, in other words, people of the same you, especially white people, they'll join forces. Even though they hate each other, to usurp a different nationality or a different color. I really want to say another color. I've seen it I've seen it in LA, I've seen it all over the world. It's wild. Like people who do not like each other but they're the same color will go against someone not their color. So it might be a true statement that a lot of rich aristocratic Europeans in England took Russian money to help pay for their castles and whatever weird stuff they were doing and in exchange changed the politic that were the politics that were going on in England I mean, that's logical. People take bribes all the time. It also happened here. So you had more um, kind of racist, misogynistic um, rhetoric happening. So let's put that aside. Let's talk about Thomas Kingston. Thomas Kingston, we don't know the whole truth on that, like, they're being really quiet about how he died. They said it was a traumatic brain injury and a gun was found close to the body. That doesn't... That's. I mean, I know the British talk funny, but that's not a real clear indication that he shot himself. He could have been hit on the head and a gun was found by his body. We don't know. They're being very, very quiet about it and very, very weird. <laughs> Which... We'll put, but one of the last people who saw Thomas Kingston was was William, and he went to an event and he had bruises on his neck. A couple of days later, and then in between that, he didn't go to his godfather's memorial, which he was going to speak at. He left. I mean, he let them know like 40 minutes before the service that he wasn't going to speak and he was supposed to be, you know, a main speaker. It was his godfather. But William had time to go to a pub in that same week. Priorities. And we're not even getting to Kate yet, but let's get back to Thomas. Thomas was a financier. But before that, he was his hostage negotiator. Now, I thought possibly he was involved with Kate because Pippa, Kate's sister, used to date him. I don't know. Could be, could not be. But I found that he, it was kind of ironic that he was a hostage, hostage negotiator and Kate is allegedly missing in action. But there's information coming out saying that Thomas had money issues, may have lost money, may have taken money from the Russians, and 
this is about to come out. I don't know. We'll see. But I find his death circumstances highly suspicious because they're not talking about, like, if he actually did commit suicide. The language in which they they said he took his life, allegedly, just don't, doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound clear. They might be still investigating, but they said they they haven't. And... I mean, they're not anymore. They're not... Lisa, I don't know. I just feel like that whole thing is insane. It makes no sense. Because it, normally you find out why a person commits suicide. Especially someone up in the public eye. I guess they can hide. They hide things all the time. But it, I just feel like Thomas Kingston's death is a little weird, to say the least. And the fact that William was one of the last people who saw them. And there seemed to be some party where there was a lot of violence because somebody else close to William had a black eye. And these people drink a lot. But if Thomas was depressed, if there was a letter, all those things have not been, you know, they haven't said anything about it. So they're keeping it very, very secret, hush-hush. So there may or may not be a serious investigation on whether Thomas Kingston accepted money from the Russians or not. Or what the hell's going on. There seems to be a lot of secrecy going on in England right now. William having bruises on his neck, having dark eyes swaying back and forth at events that he's been videotaped at. The whole picture diabolical of putting out stuff and then blaming Kate and then allegedly forging her information, saying her apology online. It's just, it's just giving malignant narcissism, psychopathic, murderous, insane, entitled shit. I just don't, I don't understand it. Like, I think they're kind of doing a mind fuck. And sometimes when you're in an abusive relationship and somebody's gaslighting you, which means they're trying to make you crazy by saying, oh, you're not seeing that. I didn't do that. I didn't cheat on that person. It's like all in your imagination. I feel like what they're doing on a larger scale is gaslighting. 